First off, thank you very much, Gloomhaven, for sponsoring the stream. Um, this is available on PC. It's just had a fresh new update on the September on September 17th, which added co-op among other things. If you're interested in it yourself, there is a panel beneath my stream as well as the command exclamation point Gloomhaven in chat. Do get a hold of those if you want. The studio is Flaming Foul Studios, which have done previous titles such as the Fable trilogies and the movies. Their goal is to build deep and interesting strategic experiences and add a little bit of humor along the way for that. And they work closely with their fans and customers in the development process. There's been a lot of feedback for this game already on things like Discord and Twitter, and that continues to be the case. And they're adding things that fans are requesting for this game, which is pretty cool overall. It's an adaptation of the physical board game, and they've worked closely with Isaac uh, Childress, the original creator of the board game. It's changed a lot in the last year and will continue to be updated as it gets from pre-release to release. And yeah, if you have feedback for the devs or the community in general, check out their Discord to do that. All right. Um, let me talk you through what this is though. Um, I have some interaction with this as well. I've never played, this is based on a board game. It's a, it's a PC game that's been essentially um, inspired by and based on the board game with a heavy interaction between the guys who made the board game and the developers of this game. Um, I have a really close friend of mine, Kevin, you guys, if you guys watched any of my D&D, who plays this board game all the time and I've always wanted to get a chance to play with him, I haven't yet. So I'm actually kind of excited to check this out. Um, there's been a new patch, September 17th, they added co-op. Uh, part of their, their goals, there's um, command in chat, which is um, exclamation point uh, gloom um, roadmap, I think where they, it's, this, this is not quite released yet, basically. I have not played this at all. Uh, I watched a brief tutorial on it, but pretty damn brief, and read through some promotional material, but I've never checked out, so we're going into this blind chat. Hard? Hard, is, hard equals normal? Yeah. Hard is, okay, we'll, we'll start on hard. Let's check it out. I want, I want to see the gameplay. We'll probably end up restarting a million times, too. All right, let's do full tutorial. Uh, story intro, quick start, full tutorial. Yeah, I, I'm going to full tutorial it. I really do want to understand the game because it looks super fucking sweet. So I really would like to check it out. All right. Welcome, Guildmaster. I'm the Guild Trainer and I'm here to guide you through setting up your own Mercenary Guild. Let's start with guiding the brute through the first tutorial. Uh, before we get to the action, you'll want to acquaint yourselves with how to adjust to the view of the battlefield. So let's go over camera controls, sure. Uh, WSC for panning, sure. QE for rotation. Okay. And mouse wheel for this, sure. All right, control plenty of a, control a party of mercenaries, each equipped with a deck of ability cards. These cards are how your mercenaries will explore dungeons, fight enemies, and the treasure. At the beginning of each round, the first thing you do is select two cards for your mercenary to use on their turn. In this tutorial, the brute, the brute has just three cards at his disposal, as you can see highlighted on the left. Trample, grab and go, and provoking roar. Uh, provoking roar is grayed out to indicate it's currently discarded for the sake of the tutorial, so now let's just assume the two cards has are available, okay. Select trample, all right. Attack three, pierce two, move four, jump, attack two. So I think these are, I believe these are split cards. You have the option of choosing either one of these. And I think the split is almost always, so you have attack and move as one option and then something special. So I think the pierce is the trample portion of this. We'll see. All right, select trample. Yeah. See how the question next to the brute's portrait at the top of the screen has changed into a number? Uh, it's probably in the way. Am I in the way for any of this chat? Probably right over the tutorial. Let's move, uh, let's move down here for now. See what it's like. The other question next to the brute's portrait at the top of the screen is changed into a number that shows his initiative. Great. The number next to the first card you select determines the character's initiative for the round. Can we see that on the card? Uh, yes, in the center is the initiative. Oh, there's the attack to move to. I can see it next to the 72 now that I'm looking. Okay. The lower the number, the earlier in the round the character will go. Okay, so opposite Battle Brothers. Low initiative is faster. Is there another character's visible right now? Immediately his be his turn. Anyhow, great. Select grab and go. Okay. Uh, select grab and go. Loot one, move four. Right. Okay, brute's turn. Now it's brute's turn. Time to choose some actions. Each half the card represents an action comprised of one or more abilities. Okay. You get two act. You get to use two actions per turn. You can pick any of the four card halves on the left to use as your first action. And note that you must use the opposite side of the card for your second. Wait. I only get. So I'm actually when I pick a card, I only get. I only am actually picking one card because I have to use just the one, but I have to use both halves. Okay. 
For example, here you can choose either the top half of trample and the bottom half of grab and go. Oh no, it's it's just okay. There's nothing for the brute to do in this room, so what you want to do is move, proceed through the door to see what lies beyond. With the move ability, grab and goes bottom half, lets the brute move four hexes. Okay. Let's use that. Move four. Can you? Select the bottom half of grab and go, sure. Move to the closed door. Select the highlighted doorway hex, yep. Yeah. Enter the, enter, either click the doorway again or click on the open door button to confirm the move. Okay, let's click it again. All right, the room contains your first enemy, a bandit guard. Like player characters, monsters also select actions for the turn. Let's find out what this bandit is planning to do this round by hovering over his portrait. Move one, attack three. Hover the bandit portrait, initiative tracker, sure. While hovered, you can see the bandit's intentions this room. He plans to move and attack, whereas player characters get two actions per turn, monsters only get one. Okay. Notice how the bandit has lower initiative than brute, so he's going, after, going before us. Okay. Oh, so I get to finish my turn before you can act, all right? We have one more movement remaining. It looks like I can break that up. That's nice to know, since we move three to get to here. All right, so we move closer. I thought it was double left for that. Oh, maybe it doesn't let me. Select the highlighted hex and move next to Bandit. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now that you finish using grab and go for the turn, it's discarded. It's no longer usable to your hand until it's back via resting, okay? The top half of trample. Yeah. Click the bandit. You click the bandit, guys. Okay. Whenever you attack, an attack modifier is drawn from your character's modifier deck, and that value is applied to your attack. In this case, you can see by the bandit guard that's a plus zero modifier is drawn, so your attack still just deals its base value of three damage. This tutorial will only have plus zero modifiers in effect to keep things simple. We'll explore other modifiers later. We hit him for three. Presumably, that's the end of our turn. Yep. All right, now it's his turn. He tends to move and perform a melee attack for three damage. Is there zone? However, since he's already within melee range of brute, he'll, he'll forgo moving and get straight to the attack. Okay. While, mon Ouch. While monsters always take damage directly to their hit points, whenever a player character's damage, you're presented with three options. Firstly, you can simply take the damage to your character's hit point total. And if you are, if you reach zero, you're exhausted, which means you can no longer act in the scenario. If all your hit mercenaries are exhausted, you'll lose the scenario. Second, you can choose to burn two discarded ability cards instead of receiving the damage. If you burn a card, it will no longer be recovered by resting. Okay, if you were to burn two of the brute's cards, you would not have enough cards left for the following turn, and thus would be exhausted. Finally, you can choose to burn one available card. This option is grayed out. All brute's cards are currently discarded. Usually wise to take the damage over burning cards if possible, unless you run out of cards to finish the scenario. For now, let's opt to take three damage. Okay. Receive three damage. Okay, Bandit's turn is over. New round begins. During ability card selection, if you have at least two discarded cards, you may perform a long or short rest to recover some of them. All of the Abrute's ability cards are currently discarded. Long rest doesn't count as a card, and as thus he'll have to rest to continue. But rest will burn one of your discarded cards at random, losing it for the rest of the scenario, but recover all of their discarded cards before continuing your turn as normal. You can recover cards using one immediately this turn. Okay. Long rest takes up the whole turn. And we're pretty low on HP, right? We're at like one HP? Yeah. So we don't want to just burn because presumably he kills us if we do that. I wonder if we can see monster cards. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and gives me initiative 99. However, you not only get to, not only get to choose which card to burn instead of it being at random, but the character will perform a heal two action and refresh all item cards. If you see the long rest here, it'd be certain death of the bandit draws an attack card for the round, and the brute has neither health nor cards to spare, so let's the short rest, yeah. Click the short rest button, okay? Grab and go has been randomly selected as the card to burn. Once per short rest, you can opt to redraw the random card to burn at the cost of one. Once per short rest, you can opt to redraw the random card to burn at the cost of one damage, but with the brute only on one health, this has been an option, okay? So we burn the card. Yeah. Gone. We get trample and provoking roar has been put to hand. All right, both the brute and the bandit are near death, so it's critical to go as early as possible in the round to get first attack. Remember, the first card you choose determines the brute's initiative order, so let's choose provoking roar to maximize the chance. Uh, why? Because provoking roar is 10. It's way faster than trample. Sounds good. Okay. No, I don't want to select trample. 
Why did I select them both? I don't understand. Mm, I should go back up slightly to see why I had to select both there. Okay. All right, now that we're in the same room of the bandit, we can see the play enemies draw their ability cards each round after the player, so you won't know what they'll be doing or what their initiatives will be until this point in the round. It appears the bandit was planning to once again use a move and attack, but because you've chosen to act quickly with initiative 10, you won't have the option. Okay. Oh, the first one determines order. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks, chat. All right. So here he is. We're going to... So we have to pick... If we pick the... So I could pick potentially either of these, right? Is that two? Could I do this one? Move four, jump, attack two. I think he has damage reduction. Health, movement, attack. Can I move after attacking? Oh, it says select the top half of the trample. So I guess we're going to do what it says, but okay. Firm targets. Kill his ass. Okay, got him. Do you see the gold on the floor the bandit left behind? To pick it up, you need to use a loot ability. One important rule of Gloomhaven to bear in mind is that you, you, that you don't automatically loot treasure. If you, want to, if you want it, you have to pick it up before the scenario ends. Loot abilities can appear on ability cards, but often the easiest way to collect it is to end your turn on a hex that contains a gold pile. Let's move the brew onto the gold before the end of his turn. Yeah. Okay. Wait, look at Provoking Roar. It doesn't have a move ability in the bottom half action, so can how can the brute reach the gold? This is where default actions come in handy. To the left and right of the central initiative value are two small numbers. Um, this will allow the character to perform a melee attack for two instead of a top action or default move two. Okay. The default boom button on provoking roar. Yeah. All right. Get movement and turn. Get gold. Seems good. Not only did you vanquish the lone gander guard, you also managed to pick up a few pieces of gold. Basic covered is now time to introduce you to some slightly more dangerous scenarios. Okay. Cool. Alright, this looks fun. This looks fun. Welcome to your first training mission. You've learned the basics, but now you must help the gravely wounded brute deal with the bandit archer elite. Perhaps we could be better at getting to the stage with more health. A stronger enemy with greater stats than normal. Sweet. With only a single hit point remaining, any amount of damage getting through will cause the brute to become exhausted. As such, you'll have to avoid any incoming damage by burning cards. For the sake of training, the attack modifier decks will be zero for now, so don't worry about those. Your objectives to start are take down the archer with a single attack, loot the gold she drops. Surely you can handle that. All right, so we are choosing cards at this selection stage, right? We want to go early, and this has a stun on it. Stun seems like that would be useful. We're definitely taking that. It's our fastest initiative, and it also has a stun. Seems good. Uh, attack three, range three, doesn't seem useful. Overwhelming assault. Well, maybe I have more than two. I'm not sure. I think I have to choose two, but maybe I don't have to. Let's take these two. Let's take shield bash and overwhelming assault. Okay. All right. They're going ahead of us. We lose. How could I have gone faster than 15? Rip. Oh, I have to burn one available card. <laughs> okay. We're going to burn... Grab and go. We have to loot it. But this basic one can loot too. We'll, oh, we'll burn grab and go. Yeah. It'll, it'll prevent the damage. Alright, so now we're going to stun, stun our ass. What is this trap? We're not going near that, I guess. Go ahead and select stun. Stun her. Okay. And now we do damage. Oh, this doesn't let me do damage. Push two. Move three, push two. We could push her into our own trap if we could find it. Do you think we can just push her however we want? That'd be cute. Let's see. Move three. So I want to move here. Maybe. And then can we push her? Target one adjacent enemy. Uh, maybe I'm being too fancy with this. So skip movement. Push. 
and firm push. Maybe I have to, maybe it only pushes in an angle. All right, we're gonna try this again, I guess. Do I push away from you? Okay, so we would lose that one. All right, so we'll try that again. I, I wasn't sure about the push mechanic, hadn't done that yet. I thought maybe we could be cute and push her into his own trap, but push her into her own trap, but apparently not, all right. Okay. There's nothing faster, right? 87, 61. All right. I would still go for 15 because I don't know that she has a 14 move or whatever. So we'll take this and we're going to take... If we're going to have to use the top attack with is attack and stun, we want the bottom on something else, right? Attack 2. Move, push doesn't seem very helpful. Grab and go. Well, if we know she's going fucking first because we do, we could do the bottom and just hit her for 6. So instead of this, we could maybe... How do I... I go back in selection? No, once I've clicked it, I apparently have clicked it. All right. I want to kill her. Overwhelming attack is six. I'm taking that. Okay. All right, they go first. Sure. They do damage to us. We have to burn a card. Sure. Okay. Burn, grab, and go. Okay. Okay, puts a trap down. Go ahead and attack for six. Great. Overwhelming Assault is a powerful card, but such power comes at a cost. Actions like Overwhelming Assault's top half with the flaming card icon in the corner cause a card to be burnt. I mean, you can't use it again after the scenario. Okay, didn't know that. Didn't notice that. All right, we didn't take a move, but we can use a move. So we can default move to here, confirm movement, loot it, end turn, get the loot. Okay. Think of training, I'm going to set you another objective, loot the chest before you rush headlong into the trap. You might want to heads up a bit. I suggest taking a long rest, which will heal two and recover enough discarded cards, allowing you to withstand the two damage in the trap and reach the chest. Okay. Where's my long rest option here? I have to discard a card to burn. Wait, why do I have to burn a card? I thought I got stuff back with a long rest. Okay. All right. All right, move on to the trap and take damage. I have to select cards again. Yeah. I have disarm. Why do I have to move on to the trap? Why can't I just fucking disarm the stupid thing? That. Easy trap. Okay. Use an item. The boots of stratum come in handy next time you need a little extra mobility, right onto the next part of your training. Great. All right, we'll do a little bit more training, and then I think we're going to dive in. We learned about the basic attack and move abilities, but this time we're going to use some abilities with additional effects. A move action with a jump effect will help you here. Jump allows you to cross tiles containing obstacles or enemies and even move over traps without triggering them. These boots of striding you picked up last turn can be used to increase the move mobility by two hexes. Okay. You know the damage to take her out in one go, but if you act fast, you can apply the disarm condition before she, before she can attack. Great. Uh, use jump and disarm the archer. Okay. Use jump and disarm the archer. Loot one, move four. Leaping cleave. Move three, jump. How far can I jump? Is it just one tile? You might want to do that. I need these two. Oh, I did that backwards. Fuck. How do I unselect chat? Yeah, that one first, then this one. Okay. Okay, she picked a move and attack. Sure. All right, so we go first. We go. 
It's weird I can pick a card with 10 initiative, but then not use it first, but I guess I can. All right, so we're going to go move first. We'll move here. What does this mean? Do a single movement. Go here. During a move ability, you can use items like your boots to stride to increase your movement range, sure. I want to go here. And then I want to jump. How do I jump? Get movement. Get. No. No! How do I go back? Okay. <laughs> Alright, we're going to lose this one chat. I just assumed the jump portion was coming after the move portion. Rip. Jump applies to my... Jump applies to your entire move. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. How do I restart this? I can't, probably. Abandon quest do. Yeah. Good. Try again. We want the 10 move and the disarm. That is a disarm and the leap. Okay. All right. So now we go move and jump. We're going to apply this. I can just go there and it doesn't take any damage. Okay. So like smart selects that for movement. Okay. Nice jump. And now we're going to disarm. Hey, uh, I have more movement left. I guess I have more movement left. So the jump is maybe one tile, and when I use the boots, it makes it three, I guess. So we'll skip movement. And now I want to attack and disarm. Okay, disarmed. Great. Getting a decent hit with broken disarm. Okay. He's low on health. Kill the archer, jump over the traps, and loot the chest. Short rests allow you to return, recover discarded cards, immediately use them in this very turn. Recover discarded card, okay. So we clearly can't get there right now. Lose one discarded card at random to recover all other discarded cards. Take a short rest mid fight, apparently. Okay. Take one damage to redraw. Any enemy who targets one of your adjacent allies with an attack this round targets you with the attack instead. Doesn't seem very useful. That's fine. We can burn that. I didn't look at their health, but okay, they're at two. We're going to need to take something fast. We don't have 54 is our fastest. Are we just fucked then? It might be. I have push. If I push him into the trap, does it trigger the trap and then I can walk over there? Let's try overwhelming assault and grab and go. He's moved for that now. Take these two. Okay. I think she's going to kill us. Oh, she rolled a 68. Okay, never mind. Great. So she's super slow. Great. So then we can shove her. Get movement, push. There. Oh, I can't. There. I want to let me confirm push. Obstacle. Do I target her instead? Quitters never win. Thank you, Stormworm. Uh, chat, help me with the targeting here. Has to be the entire distance. Okay. I see. Can I instead toggle them and push her there? Okay. Oh, I should have totally done that because then her. Oh, it dropped it where she died. Okay. Cool. And then we're going to move. Wait, what? I don't want to attack. I want to move. 
Which was my movement. I understand, but isn't that the second card now? Move is only the bottom. Oh, I didn't understand. Oh, I see. I thought every card was both. Ah, so that's no good. So if I do this route, I still don't get there in one turn. Yeah. Thanks, chat. All right. Yeah, but I thought the free the the default actions were always um, either. Yeah. We want to go first, and we want to kill. Okay. So this is move. With this, we're going to here. Jump. And. Get movement, disarm, hit her. Still alive, annoyingly. Okay. All right, so we need to kill her and then move. Too bad, because she cleared the trap for us nicely. We have to short rest. Question is, what do our cards do? Act three. I don't know what the one shield means. We got to kill it. Can I loot anything with grab and go, you think? In range X. So to try, and we have to loot the chest. Is that the rest of our goal? Yeah, kill the archer this round, jump over the traps, and loot the chest. Okay. What was the push? We have to short rest. The question is um, can we get rid of this one? This one doesn't seem very good for us right now. I think that's fine. Okay. Now we choose two. Move three, push two. It was good, but it wasn't great. Because I have to offer the move first, which wasn't any good. We can attack three. And then move. But then we we're getting fucked by that. Well, that has a jump at the bottom, so if we could kill instead, we can't. We could attack with the top of this, and then move with the jump. But it's only jump one, so that doesn't work. What am I missing here? Right? Because if we we could add, we could kill him, that will kill him first. Is the default attack? Why would the default attack matter? All three tiles are jump. Oh, okay. So then we could just do sure. We could use default attack. Select this. Select that. Okay. All right. So we can attack. Good. And then we can jump three, apparently. So why did I need to utilize the um, the boots then, if I could jump three always? Don't I die doing this? No, that was definitely a jump. Why did I have to use the jump in the first place? I jumped three tiles. I jumped from, was it here? I moved, oh, I see, because it would have been four tiles. Oh, I see. So I could have jumped to there. We only use the boots because of that. All right. Here's another item. Cool. All right. Arrest, stab, and jump right into the chest nicely done. The potion will surely be of use to missions to come. Great. Let me grab my water chat. Two seconds. Oh, 
Brillo. To be a successful guild master, you need to pay close attention to enemy actions and try to plan your moves around them. Just one simple objective for you this time. Don't get attacked. You have to start over an enemy lands, lands a hit. You'll need to escape this room by opening the door in front of the brute, but remember the enemies in the room also get to act this round. I just missed the advice. <laughs> okay. Don't get attacked for two rounds. There's four enemies. Can I just run ahead of them? All right, let's just try running, see what happens. Okay, we went first. How come only two of them are taking actions instead of all four? And if I do this, I can't do the other one. Uh, a little bit awkward. Disarm is only... We can disarm that guy, right? We go there. And then disarm him. Oh, it says disarm too. It says an attack X ability allows a character to attack an enemy within range of the base value of X. Oh, not range of X. Rip. Okay. So we die here. Okay. So that ain't going to work. All right. What was the suggestion? Act quickly, looking carefully at what actions the enemies are going to take. I've set it up so you should be able to find a safe place to stand out of reach. I see. But how do I know their abilities until then? I see. I'm just gonna. I'm going to assume that movement is relevant and probably disarm. I'm picking these two again. This one has move one, attack three. That's the bandit archer. They can only shoot out to this rank. So if I move past that rank, I should be good. And the bandit guard has move two, attack two. Sure, but which bandit guard? Which one are you? Two, there's three bandit guards here, right? Bandit guard 50. All of them. They're move to attack too. I gotta get over here at least. I feel like I can only disable two. Oh, LOS, go into this room, you think? It's two rounds, all right. Let's assume, it, let's assume that's fine. Okay, so we're going to go move again. There's two. He can move too. So if I go there, he hits me. If I go there, he hits me anywhere in there, right? And I can't get to him. Seems not that helpful. Oh, but there he is. No, it's not him. I'm, am I just fine here? Am I fine right here? No one can reach me here. All right. Good. Yeah. All 
All right, the enemy is both rooms. Opening door always add more and will always add more enemies to deal with. So make sure you're prepared that when opening doors. Just one more round of bandit dodge to complete the mission. You'll find it tricky to locate a safe space this time. Perhaps you should try preventing an attack to survive. I'm pretty sure I got rid of my disarm though, right? What does a leaping cleave do? I don't know what that one means. Um, all right. So we don't know what they're doing yet. We have to choose cards. I suspect the short rest is needed because I think I need a faster move, right? And move three with the jump. So I can jump over him. But we're not going to get very far past him. Do I have items? Apparently my items did not carry over. We have to do this. This card, grab and go. I kind of want this one. My health. Okay. All right. We want disarm. And I want to move. Yeah. Same ones from them. Move to shoot. Move to. Okay, so she can move two and shoot three. Okay. So we would go first. We're gonna push this guy. I think move three, push one works. No, push is bad for us. Maybe it's just move two, hold on. If I go there and disarm him, I'm good, right? Okay. All right, easy game. All right. All right, there's one more tutorial kind of thing which we'll take care of right now. This is actually very helpful though. It's not in t it's not super intuitive that has to like learning it, right? Okay. Uh, let's talk about attack modifiers. Always zero attack modifier. In real scenarios, for each attack, the character will draw an attack modifier of influences the damage dealt. This can increase the damage by plus one, plus two, or times two, and decrease by minus one, minus two, or times zero, or leave the value unaffected. Uh, you can see the contents of the character's modifier deck by hovering over any character. Archers have just two attack modifier men in their deck. Times two and times zero. We want them to draw times zero with no damage, and we're going to give them disadvantage to ensure that. Range attacks have disadvantage when their target is on adjacent hex. This forces the attacker to draw two modifier cards that just one of the worst results selected. These archers only have two modifiers remaining. If they attack with disadvantage, they will draw both, but be forced to choose a zero. Okay. You can only disadvantage one archer, so kill the other with a ranged attack. Should be easy as a brute's attack modifier deck is full of plus ones. You can thank me later. And next to one event, one of the archers give her advantage, kill the other with the archer with a range attack. What are my range attacks? Throw dagger is my range attack, so that one's gotta happen. It's also my lowest initiative, seems obvious we're taking that. And then what was the other one? We just wanna move next to somebody. You guys have four health though. And I'm full of plus one, so I do four, I guess. How do I see that? I hover. Attack modifier plus one. Nice. Alright, so this should be super easy then. I just move next to one and kill the other. But is the issue, can they move away from me first? Presumably they can. So do I need to push then? Like push them into the corner? No push, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, let's grab that. Yeah. All right, let's continue. So we're going to move. They can draw cards that don't have move on it, like that card, which has no move on it. Gotcha. Nice. So I would move to here. And then I would dagger throw this dude. Oh, but dagger doesn't... Oh, it does. Plus one. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Disadvantage makes them draw that. How do I tell that again? So the remaining archer loot the chest. So if I hover them, attack modifiers are 0 plus 1 and times 2. 
So disadvantage doesn't necessarily... Well, that means the most I can take from her is plus one. Does she also have the, the negative in there? Does that mean... Does the, does the zero mean nothing? Not the zero, but the, 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 the not. Okay. So she can roll a zero here, but she could also roll a plus zero, plus one, or times two. So we're not guaranteeing anything here with the disadvantage. We got four health. What's our attack roll? We're on a plus one. Why don't we just fucking kill her again? We gotta go first is all, right? We're at two. All right, so we should short rest. Okay, do we want to get rid of this one? That one's fine. Burn, grab, and go. Okay, we got spare dagger back. Wait, what? Why didn't I get provoking roar back? Lose one discarded card at random in order to recover all other discarded cards because that card was gone. Yeah. Well, do we know what she's going to get? We have no choice but to select these two. So I guess I will. Okay, she has move two, shoot two, range of three. Can we get out of range? I thought it showed me having boots up, so I might be able to get away from her. It's a small room, though. I have a plus one. I have a plus one modifier. I don't give a fucking shit. I can just kill her. All right. I mean, good fight. Yeah. And that was the other quest option. Loot the chest. Oh, I didn't leave enough movement for that. <laughs> Feels bad. All right, so we fail this. I mean... Oh, I could boost this, though. Okay. Yeah. All right, heater shield. Sweet. All right. Heater shield, some of these help you soak up some damage. You finish your basic training. Time to get your other mercs and go exploring. Sweet. Let's do it. All right. Great work for the basic training missions. I'll introduce you to the third member of the guild. He ain't much of a fighter, though. Hey, not all of us are good at stabbing people. Excuse me. Greetings, guild master. I'm the humble merchant of your fledgling guild. I deal with the important aspect of running a guild. In other words, money, which I might add is sorely lacking at the moment. What you can see right now is the world map. You probably notice it looks a bit barren at the moment. And well, I've got some good news and the bad news. The bad news is the realm has been overrun with all manner of unpleasant monsters, rogue bandits, wandering undead, dark cultists. <gasps> you name it. The good news is that you're going to help us restore the routes back to our other settlements out there hidden in the fog. Before we can do anything about that, however, we need to get some mercenaries on the guild roster. Let's start with actually recruiting the poor old brute who's got himself into a spot. A bother again. Okay, I am brute. Recruit brute to the guild. Travel. Okay. The trainer tells you to head to the Demon's Gate graveyard, and then there you'll find a mausoleum with the smashed in front door. Walking down the steps into the gloom below, you follow a trail of broken bones until you hear the sounds of battle entering a chamber. The badly wounded brute is facing off against a number of undead. Let's begin looking more closely at what each individual character can do. In this scenario, Brute has two level one living elite has two level one living bones elites to deal with, which means their stats will be greater than their level zero counterparts. Monster stats are combined with base ability cards drawn from the master's class the monster's class turn, resulting in the cards you see in the monster's deck. Thanks, Gatsu. Um, monster stats are combined with a base ability card drawn for the monster's class's turn, resulting in the cards you see with the monster's cards from the rounds are revealed. Jesus, that's a sentence. So expect them to move a bit further and attack a bit harder, especially as they are elites. Note, however, they both have an innate shield one effect indicated by the shield icon. Each point of shield prevents one damage from incoming attacks. However, an amount of shield can be ignored if targeted with attack with pierce. I have it on good authority that these living bones are going to attack more than once each this turn, you're low on cards and won't be able to afford to burn any cards, so surviving here requires some shielding of your own. By the way, while these enemy shields are an innate persistent effect, normally active bonuses granting abilities such as shield are accomplished on a round. Or a persistent icon. Your objectives are kill a living bones using an attack with pierce, apply some shield of your own, use minor healing potion. So we probably want to go first at 1 HP. It sounds like we're going to need Pierce. There's our shield. There's Pierce. Shield's even a move effect. Seems good. Yeah. They're moving and attacking for two. Each. 
Alright, but shielding... Okay, what does potion do? Minor healing potion prevails 3. Does it take an action? During your turn, perform a heal 3 self-action. Okay. Apply shield. Uh, heal, I guess. Uh, what's our attack modifier right now? Zero. The free action? How do I use it, chat? If I were, if I were so inclined. Or I just click it and click confirm action. Okay. Yeah. Good. And they're hitting me for two, I believe. We killed a low hit point one, obviously. Great. Okay. I uh, didn't even look at his modifier. Good to know. Okay. I think we can receive two damage. It's fine. So what was his modifier there? How do I see what he rolled? He must have rolled a plus two. It's down here somewhere, but I can't really parse that very well. Sure. He tagged me again? Fucker. All right. Dude, quit it. Check me three times. <laughs> Kill him. Use the shield? Oh, I didn't know I had that option. Was it giving me the prompt? I didn't notice. first we have a plus zero we have to push him attack three push two firm target huh and now where's my push EZ skeleton okay. now we want to loot move four I have to end turn on it though. Two gold, two gold, doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Seems fine. Equipment is once permission, items are one use. Okay. All right. Claim rewards. The brute sure can soak up damage well, but he's not the most mobile. Having ample funds is going to be of utmost importance getting this guild off the ground. Do you know anyone good at gold acquisition? I know just the woman. She's also a dab hand at poking hose and holes and those who get in her way. She's in the process of liberating some gold right now. Perhaps we could lend her some hand. All right. Recruit the scoundrel. Yeah. We'll travel over there. Trainer points you in the direction of a ruined crypt on the outskirts of town. Dead bandits litter the area. Many with knives still embedded in their corpses. It's clear they didn't see their attacker coming. All right. Necrobat. Eat the scoundrel. She's incredibly nimble and mobile, not to mention able to combo off huge amounts of melee damage when things line up just right. Let's help her out of the sticky situation. Firstly, you need to kill three archers in the round before they attack. You'll need certainly need something that can hit more than one target at a time. Attack two, range three, target two.
Can I smoke bomb the throwing knives? I hit two of them. To and gives me two shield. Which is good. Can't do both attacks though. Pull two, range three. Loot two. I mean, it looks like we're gonna just kill two and put up shields and have eight health, so. Uh, okay. Oh, it's got attack on the bottom. But I haven't moved yet. Or how long I gained invisible for? Where's this experience shit you're talking? It's experience, not shields. Oh, I see. It's worth one experience to play the card. Pull two. Can I pull them towards the trap, I guess? Probably what they want me to do. All right, I'll take these two. All right, we're going first, great. All right, let's attack two. I get one. We have to our modifier. Should have looked first. Zero. Okay. Easy dagger toss. Okay. And then we'll pull this one. Get there. Easy. Feels good. Pull to picking up multiple targets in a single turn, doesn't it? One less objective. Loot at least five piles of gold this round. A tip for you. Sometimes the top half of the card allows you to move too. Loot abilities pick up all the gold within the radius specified by the value. It should work out when you stand and get looting. Okay. So we have the snack, which is... Wait. I thought one of these was loot more. Loot two at the bottom of that. We need to short rest. Five tiles? Okay. Alright, no, 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 no. We need this one. No, we don't care about this one. This is fine. Okay. Alright, so we want quick hands, not quick hands, swift bow. So we have movement on that. Presumably we could end turn wherever the fuck we wanted. Where's the loot thing? Loot two. Is this two around me? So if I stand there, I get all of that. One, two, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I just have to loot five? Can I just move there and loot it? Oh, okay. Thought I move on the bottom, move on the bottom. I need to move on the top. I need this one. No enemies, so it just shouldn't matter what order I pick them in, I believe. Okay. We move to there. Ooh, I... Yeah, and then loot too, right? Okay. Alright. Alright. Andrew joins the guild. Fantastic. Alright, I want a mission. Fame rewards. First thing we should do as a guild is reestablish the trade route with the Gibbet Hill to the west. They've been having a, we've been having a small problem with bandits in the woodland and route, but with the brute and scoundrel to assist, that's nothing that should cause you any trouble. They give you much needed experience in the job and allow me to get some new items. Go knock the bandits' heads together. Eat. Lock the trade route. Here. Toss a coin to your hangman. The road is deserted as you make your way towards Gibbet Hill. Trading in this area has effectively stopped for many months now, with so few varying, daring to venture along the main highways. As you make your way along the trail, wending its way through a wooded grove, the crack of a twig snapping underfoot pierces the silence. You hear rustling in the undergrowth, getting louder as its source makes its way towards you. Enter dungeon. I mean, giving us a nice walkthrough. Game seems fine so far. It's your first proper fight. Looks like two clearings with a couple of bandits each. Just remember what I've taught you and don't enter the second clearing until you're ready. You can change the character starting positions this time by clicking the white hexes. So choose a formation that suits you before starting your first turn. 
By the way, if you're struggling to make uh, out objects and enemies in undergrowth, you can press tab to highlight them. You can also see the turn order of monsters the same way. This will get you all the same initiative from the card drawn by the class. You can also see the turn order of monsters of the same class this way. This will all get this. It will all get the same initiative from the cards drawn from the class. The actual order per monster on this class's turn is determined by the ID numbers. Lowest numbers act first. So that guy goes first. Yeah. So how do I reposition? Got, there's no way I want to be further away from bandits, right? Or archers, rather. Maybe there is. Okay. The Brute and Scoundrel. Got a bunch of cards in this deck. And they are sitting at 3 HP each. Can I see my roll this round? All my rolls are available. And they're archers, so presumably I want to get right on fucking top of them. Shit down their throats. I assume. Since they're archers. Alright, what's my movement availability on Brute? Disarm, Shield Bash, Spare Dagger. Spare Dagger's okay. With damage range of three. The guy's at four. If I roll one, I get to kill him. Skewer. Attack three. Plus one attack something. I don't know what this means. Move six. Ooh. I could go kick the one in the back. And then, how did I tell this? Use the card, there's the burn. So I could burn Overwhelming Assault to go kill that one in the back with the, the run. Sweeping Blow is an AoE. Trample is an attack with a pierce. I don't think they're shielded, but I don't know shit about it. Attack X, where X is the number of hexes you've moved so far this turn. Ah! We could do that. We could go wherever our run is. Dude, where was it? It's in the bottom half of one of these, right? Spear dagger, tech two spear, that one. Oh, but it's a burn to move six. Am I okay burning? Yeah, probably. All right, let's go skewer, and then attack. Except. Okay, and now my rogue is going to deal with this one. My scoundrel, I guess. Plus two attack and gain plus one when the target is adjacent to any of your allies. That will not be the case here. Backstab, add plus two and gain plus one when the target is adjacent to any of your allies. Add plus two and gain one when the target is adjacent to none of its allies. So backstab would do two extra damage. So I'd do five to that one. There's plenty, I think. Move three. Poison. I just need move three, right? So anything that moves me three or more should be okay. I don't know what poison does, but all right. So I want backstab and move three. Yeah. All right. Uh, unfortunately, they're going before brute. Okay. But I can go there and take... Which one is going first? Oh, just they're both doing the same thing. What are they doing? Move one, attack one, range three. So I'm going to get shot on the archer doing this. I can't wait my turn, right? So I'm going to take damage. I don't know how much of a critical thing that is or not. I guess we're going to find out. We're going to move three. So I have plus or minus two to this. Poison. I don't know what poison does. Negative something poison. Poison. Enemies add plus one att attack to all of their abilities against a poison target. Heal ability will cure poison. Okay, so I just do plus one extra damage and then I can backstab it, right? Gonna get shot. Did damage zero. Nice work. Set a trap down like an asshole. All right. 
So we're going to burn this to move six. We're going to go to there. And then we're going to crush him. We're going to do plus five damage, right? Because we moved five tiles. Get movement. Attack for five. I don't know what my role is. Am I going to see that in the combat log, I guess? Deals five damage, modifier zero. Okay. Is there, a, what's the distribution on these? Is it more regular to draw zero or is it equally distributed? Are the tails different in other words? Thoughts of the number of cards when you hover. Deck of modifiers. Ah, okay. Gotcha. All right, round two. Am I in a rush? I think so. I guess it uses more cards. Grab and go. Loot one. I want the gold, right? You lose scenarios mostly from card attrition. Good to know. But this is mission one. I'm not expecting card attrition to actually be the issue, but maybe. There's only two enemies, right? Two rooms. I could loot one, that would be fine, and then move. Move two. Two is very slow. It's going to take me a couple of rounds to get up there, isn't it? Alright, um... I don't want to use my last move. Move three, push two. Take this. Do I have to select two cards? Looks like I probably do. If I go there, I can end on the, the card. It doesn't matter. So just whatever one I get rid of here is then just useless. I like the plus four, but it's very slow. The move four is super useful. This one seems kind of bad. Uh, six spare dagger. Okay, and then the scoundrel is going for... That's going to get me there and loot this. I want to loot this before I go. Loot one on quick hands. Seems okay. And then... We need to go... We need five. I guess move five is okay. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so brute goes move three. Alright. And skip everything else. Okay. What is it asking me to do? Scoundrel goes, loot one, move five. Oh no, it's the bottom one. Shit, I messed that up. Feels bad? Okay. Feels real bad. What happens undo here? Oh, it's just undo what I select. Okay. Alright, I mean... I think I'm going in now. <laughs> I'm gonna do this the hard way. All right, all right. So we should take slow ones here, presumably because, what happens chat if we aggro a group of monsters in the room, but we've already passed their initiative? So if I have like 99 initiative and I go in there, do they get an action in response or is their turn done already? I didn't even see the other piles. Whoops. Oh. I'm kind of annoyed about that. I just fucked that up royally. Bad. This long rest.
Why wouldn't I long rest here? Okay. Alright, go. Wait, what is why am I Select an ability card to burn? No. Yeah, but I don't know how this is just per per fight. You're really struggling, dude. Hey, welcome. Welcome to my stream. I'm in my first hour into this game, figuring out a new interface of a board game I've never played. If you have uh, shitty comments that you wish to make, feel free to keep them to yourself until I'm ready to hear, hear them. So shut your mouth, mate. All right. Where are we here? Burning this one? Seems reasonable. Okay. All right. And Brute's turn. And I guess we have to select one of these to burn. That one. Yeah. Alright. Let's uh, get close to the door again. I wanted to end my turn next to the door. Do I always have to pick two cards? Grab Scoundrel again. Every hex you enter with this action. Do I have a loot one around me? I think I just got rid of it, right? Loot two around me. I couldn't, okay, loot two is which one? Top or bottom? Bottom. So what's my top action? Do I have a move on the top of anyone? He could also be looting. Does he have loot abilities here? That's just ending on him. Loot one on the top. And move his bottom always. Alright. Taking those two. I want to end up there. Can I move through my own character's chat? Doesn't matter. If I end there and loot, I can move around him. Okay. We want move. One, two, three, four, five, five. I have a move five. I do. Do I have anything else? Don't need a loot if I'm already looting on the other guy. It's also a move five, but it's much faster. I'm mostly, I just mostly am worried about getting rid of the stuff, right? Like, I don't want to get rid of the stuff. We're moving. Oh, shit, it's in the wrong order again. <laughs> no. I guess I can move there and do it there. That's fine. Move five. Go there. Do we take any damage? Doesn't look like it. To get the loot from standing on it, if I understand correctly. And then this guy can move one. Oh, I wanted the loot, so I wanted to move here. And then loot that. All right, so we got everything, but I spent an extra turn here that I didn't want to spend here. Okay, now we want to go. So I want to go you, you're going to go fucking five movement. Move four, jump, attack two. Move three, push two. Move three, jump. All right, let's take leaping cleave. Three, do we have a range one? We don't, attack six to experience, I have a shield. And the move is the bottom again, so we need a attack. Attack two stun seems really freaking good. Um, do I have a more? Do I have more movement? Unselect that one. Move X for damage, long rest, trample, move four. Yeah, we're gonna go trample. Not that though. We're gonna go field bash, trample. I think on you. 
And maybe just some damage here. Smoke bomb, pull two, next attack when invisible, gain. Flanking strike is move five. So that's our fastest one for next round, which is really where I want to go. We probably want to move like slowly and do range damage. That would be reasonable. You snack, attack three. We can always use this as a default move on bottom. All right, let's do with both these. Oh, but I'm gonna have to go first and I'm blocked. Fuck. What was the, what did I choose for him? 15. So long I'm after 15, that should be fine. So we just pick Swift Blow first. And then we do the snack. Yeah. All right. All right, Brute's turn. We're going through the door. Move four. One. Nope. One. Two, three, four. We can go two, three, four. We can go there and stun this bandit guard. Okay. Uh, by stun, apparently I mean kill. Fantastic. Guard goes in between, hits us apparently. For one. It's reasonable. We'll take one damage. Okay, uh, we can move. Where's the door? Lost the door. Oh, there's no door anymore? I'll have to move through the door. Can I see him? Is there a line of sight chat? Like, am I going to get LOS by this friggin' wall? Or am I good? Oh, I didn't want to use that one to move. Hold on. I want to use this one to move. Okay, confirm movement. Chuck a thing at him. Alright. In turn. Seems good. Alright, so we want to go fast here. So they don't hit us at all. So, I don't even care really. Just that one and... I mean, it's not going to matter. Anything we hit him with. I guess... Do I always know when the mission ends? So do I get a sense of how much I need to conserve cards? I'm going to want to loot too, right? There's loot over here. I can get his loot. Is there more loot over here? Yeah. And there, so that's actually where all the gold is. There's two, four, six there, and four here, it looks like. So ideally, we kill this guy. We don't have to do it with this guy either. I can kill it with somebody else. I guess I should look what else I have. All right. Let's go instead look at Scoundrel. Scoundrel is a little low on resources. I've got move five, so I can get over here. Loot two. If I go there and loot, if we kill him with that and I go there and loot, I get three piles. That seems pretty good. So it's probably... We want to do it after he's dead. So you're just looting. Could I also kill? There's no way I can move, loot, and kill. I don't think. So then back to this guy. What can we do? We can start with provoking roar. Just back to disarm him and then move on to some loot over there. There's three over there. There might be a way to do this, but I don't know how to do it. So I would have to kill him, and then I'm only going to get one of these three, unfortunately. All right, provoking leap, and then move three, I guess. It's the best I got. And then this guy is going to go move. Uh, not there. We have to go after. That. Yeah. All right. So he went at 35 pace. So no one cares about him. <laughs> Good work. Good work, buddy. All right. So first is brute. Brute kills. And then Brute moves to here. Get one of these. Yeah. All right, Scoundrel goes to here. Oh, loot's in the bottom. Shit. Loot's on the bottom, chat. Oh, we got you baited. We got you baited. <laughs> I only get one of these. Uh, 
Oh, chat. Debated. Yeah. Alright, we left a lot of money there. A little bit awkward. Enjoy a sound of gold coins in the pockets. We should buy minor mana potions. Yeah. Continue on our way. Master the elements. Recruit the Spellweaver to the guild. Help them out in the forest. Sure. The Grand Bandit alive. Yeah, I could have disarmed him if it not killed him. Yep. Seems like there's a couple of different ways I could have played that a little bit better, but that's fine. It's part of learning the game. Uh, asking about Gibbet Hill, you're directed down a forest path towards one some long forgotten ruins. After you reach a clearing, you hear a commotion ahead. It seems some bandits have cornered an or orchard woman. A woman. Some bandits have cornered an orchard woman. Orchard woman. Orchid woman? An orchid woman. Is this who you've been told to find? I don't know. I don't know what an orchid woman is. An orchid is a plant, right? <laughs> They're not talking. They're not kidding when they say cornered. All right, meet the Spellweaver, a powerful but fragile magic wielder who can harness the natural elements of the world. Good thing we found her when we did. There's a lot of bandits. To get her out of this mess, you'll need to harness the power of the elements infused in the battlefield. The elemental infusions displays can be seen on the right of the screen, indicating which magical elements available for consuming. In this scenario, the ice element is already infused. The elements are normally infused for two rounds for using actions with elemental symbols on them available for consumption after turns they're infused. That did not make any sense to me. This round, you must consume the ice elements to augment freezing Nova's attack, killing as many bandits as you can, survive the round by using a jump move to escape. Okay. We're gonna freezing Nova. That's our fastest one, so presumably that's what we want. There's the ice element thing. We'll figure that out in a minute. And then we have to jump to escape, they said. So it's these two. All right, they're going after us, thankfully. All right, so I don't know... This element is available to use the rest of the round and the whole of the next round. Once used, it's unavailable for other characters. Consume element. Oh, I see. So on the card, I augment with this. Yes. All right. So I see. So the, here's the little pips you guys are talking about. So I have one miss, one minus two, two minus ones, five zeros, two plus ones, two plus twos, and one times two. So I have ten... 10 of this or better, and four that are less. And 14 total. Okay. All right, so we'll do this. Click on this, consume element. Get them. How do I just confirm? Confirm attack. The Nova, right? What am I missing here, chat? Get Frost Nova assholes. Yes. And then jump. Oh, what was their attack roll? Oh, they're rooted now. Mobilized. Cannot perform any move abilities. All right. Move three, attack two. So just don't end up next to them, I guess. Ah, too bad we didn't kill one of the ones a little further away. Too bad this guy didn't die. Well, it wouldn't matter. I just want to jump to here, I guess. It's a jump, I guess. All right. If I, I can't, I have to finish the turn to loot it, right? It can't waypoint through it. I can't like have moved on top of that, looted it and ended up here, right? By consuming the ice element, freezing Nova deals three base damage instead of two, knocking out three bandits, plus applying the immobilized conditions so the bandits can chase you after is pretty damn powerful. Yep. Ride the wind also infused the air element for you to use later if need be. You may also have noticed, I did not, with only three unburnt cards remaining, the spell weaver will be exhausted after the next round is over, as you cannot return burning cards via resting. Fortunately, the spell weaver has a very powerful trick up her sleeve. Many of her powerful cards may burn after usage, but the top half of the reviving ether allows her to return all of her burned cards to her hand. Getting the timing right on this one-time recovery per scenario of all burned cards is key to using her well. 
It's up to you now. Kill the remaining three bandit guards. Reviving either will recover all your burn cards. You can finish these bandits off at your leisure. Um. They don't have that. Okay. Uh, I guess we're short resting. Well. It's three bandits. I guess I have to. Okay. Short rest. Lose freezing Nova. Okay. All right. Cover all my burn cards. If I do that, I'm going to be stuck moving. I'm not sure that was actually right. I guess they might only move two, so if I just kill this guy, it could be okay. So if I, yeah, it's probably, I can't, I can't recover everything. I use it as a basic attack. Yeah, but it's the top half. Uh, that seems bad. Maybe one of my other cards matters. All right, we'll see. Move to attack two, then strengthen. This is our, I have an attack on the bottom, attack two, range two on the bottom. Didn't even notice, okay. I don't know my modifier yet. So I, there's a percentage of the time, nine out of, uh, five out of 14 times he doesn't die. Doesn't seem very good. Let's recover all my cards first. Oh, but I'm not gonna get him this turn because I've already picked my action. So it actually made no difference whatsoever. All right, fine. Got a plus two on it. That's nice. But there's a significant portion of the times that doesn't work. Alright. Loot one seems nice over there. Do I have something that lets me move and do damage? Attack three, range three. Gain one experience for each target. So I can hit three of them there. Or two of them here in this scenario. What does that buff do and how do I tell? The strength and character gains advantage on all of their attacks. Fire orbs. Freezing Nova. Mana Bolt. I'm at plenty of health. Kinda. I could leave one alive. They were hitting for two, right? But also Nova them. For two. May or may not kill them. It probably kills them. Oh, it's not adjacent. It just does two damage to adjacents. Not gonna work. I think I'm... I'm pretty sure I want the most loot possible, so I'm pretty sure I kill one of them. Maybe I heal and then kill the other one. Heals bottom. And then that would leave us with Freezing Nova to move two. And it's just loot, it's loot one. So we'll get three loots that way. Possibly five loots if I kill him. All right. Do Mana Bolt and Fire Orbs. Maybe it's too greedy, we'll find out. Okay. Bring us to five. All right, so there's Mana Fire Orbs. Hmm. 
He's generally more valuable than loot, chat says. Is damage persistent across missions? In other words, does healing now have any value at all, or should I just kill them both? Oh, they're independent roles. Didn't realize. Okay. Just go joined the guild. What? All right, quest complete to claim rewards. That's the elemental schools of magic covered. Perhaps we could do with the Recruiting someone who understands high-tech contraptions. Get a tinker. Seems good. All right. Let's go find the tinkerer. Brain over brawn. The trainer informs you that the Quartal has last been seen heading to the basement underneath an abandoned mansion on the south of the city. You reach the mansion and find the front door wide open and small footprints in the thick dust. You follow these to a door in the deep, dark vent, uh, basement. Meet the Tinker. Great support character to have on a team. You can also take on multiple enemies in a pinch. Looking at all these skeletons, I'd say this counts as one. Okay. Currently is wounded and will take one damage at the start of his turn, so you ought to heal him as soon as possible with minor health potion. Looking at where the enemies are in this room, I advise you to go late. Go as late as possible in this round. Sometimes it's better to go slow and let the enemies come to you so you aren't at risk of being attacked. Then you can use one of the Tinker's famous area effect attacks to deal some serious damage to multiple enemies. You can recognize such effects are there hex shape patterns on the ability card showing you the shape of the target that there is the target? Okay, we could heal the ink bomb. Seems good. Okay. Alright, move three, attack one. Yeah, skeletons. Yeah. Oh, they move through each other. So can we move through each other as well? I assume we blocked ourselves. Keep one damage. Okay. Let's heal. Then not remove the wounded effect. Okay. Loses the wounded effect. Okay. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, awkward. That was not what I intended to do. Mm, no way he's available. Can I, uh... Hold on. Presumably, hopefully, fingers crossed, we we're at the previous checkpoint because, uh, mistakes were made. I get confused. I, I sometimes I mess the fact that you can't use the same side of a card. I've done that twice now, right? Okay. So same deal. We do want to heal soon. But probably if we are healing, which we need to. We probably can just Oh, there's an attack on the bottom of this one. Range two. I don't want to move. I might go in the wrong order now though. But at least I can fireball next round, I guess. We are going ahead of them annoyingly. Doesn't seem very good either, honestly. Oh, we have a healing potion, so I should be using this. Fine. Well, they said I, they even said use a healing potion, but I guess I guess in my mind I read that as remove your wound effect, and we have a friggin' heal, and it's the first guy who's had. Well, I guess it's the third guy who's had a heal. Maybe not. Okay. So we want to go ink bomb, and then that one, I guess. Ink bomb's top. So they go first. 
Yeah, they added co-op as part of this. Again, this is sponsored content. One of the, this just had a big major patch. They have a, this is still early access or uh, beta. I can't remember exactly which one they're calling it right now. You can check the roadmap with exclamation point gloom roadmap to get a sense of what they're aiming for and when. Um, but this has just added a collab option. This is based on a board game. It's a pretty faithful port to my understanding of that. Uh, and has been built with the uh, input of the board game creator. So their goal is to see what players want Try to make the game as faithful as reproduction as can be enjoyed on PC, and then going from there. All right, so we're taking one damage. We're gonna try our free action pot. Get rid of the stupid wound. They're over there. Okay. Um, this is range two. This still isn't helpful. Two and one. Why can't I target? This is weird positioning. Why doesn't I hit that guy? Range three. The head of the Nova is there? This is like, if I target it there, it hits like a million tiles. I'm not sure what this, what's up with this targeting right now, chat. I want to hit these three, but I can't seem to do it. There's a hotkey for changing it. Targeting controls rotate. That's what I wanted. So I hit R and it'll let me do it. Yeah. Get wrecked, skelly failure. Um, yeah. even tells me that. All right, so we want to do these. <laughs> Doesn't have any damage on it. There's three guys left, so I need to get that back. So we got a short rest. Uh, we're gonna burn toxic bolt. Seems fine. Okay. Wasn't fine. That one burnt itself out. Then I have no attacks here, so I just oh no, it's net shooter attack three. Range two, no, pop card attack, range three, one, two, three. Should be fine with this, right? So I just go with these two, okay. And then I go kill. And I go R to rotate it, so I hit all three. The AOE skeletons. And I've got two, 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 two. All right. Hope there's not more to that. Good. All right. Claim rewards. Good. All right, we have enough people. Someone has requested our ho help. Keeper of the Oak, peace be with you. I'm the priestess here, sworn to the sanctuary of the Great Oak. Thank you for meeting with me as we are the sa at the sanctuary are in dire need of assistance. You see the Holy Crypt and the Catacombs beneath the sanctuary has been broken into and defiled by deranged cultists, raising hordes of undead due to the nefarious bidding. I beg of these, please help us rid of the menace. No problem. All too common of occurrence these days. However, anyhow, sounds like an opportunity to try out one or two of our latest crews together. Get to it. Yes. Tomb of Horrors, travel, go.
Keeper meets you at the entrance to the temple, where many of the acolytes look fearfully towards the building. She explains that portals have opened in the crypts, and although they have a holy symbol capable of closing them, no one is brave enough to enter the crypt. She gives you the artifacts and explains, gives you the artifact and explains, you will need to remain in the crypt for some time, and then the symbol will close and dispel the portals. Good luck. She ushers you forward. Okay. Do we ever get to gear our guys' chat? Or is um what we have what we got? The crypt is bathed in unholy light emanating from mysterious portals in the corner of the room. Brace yourselves for battle against whatever evil may come through. Alright. So we have Tinker and Spellweaver here, but not Brute or Scoundrel. Survive three rounds. Where are these? Oh, those are the portals? Spawner. It's got a lot of options. Okay. Living corpse, living bones, living bones. They're all level zero. I don't know what the 13 after means or the four after means. Health five, health five. I can redeploy here. Thanks. Uh, I need to read my cards. If I have close range attacks, that might be good. For example, this guy looks like he might want to be next to them. Heal 5, heal 3, attack 2, immobilize, deal 3, stun, deal 1, targets 2, range 3, stun range, heal, attack 3, range 3, you and all adjacent allies add plus one attack to all your attacks this round. Attack two, range three, pull two. That's the AOE one. Ride the wind. Reviving either. either. Fire orbs. Use fire into the area. Burns doing it. How do I add ice into the area? What does that say? Consume element, any element. Okay. None of my, that adds the heal. Adds element light. Can I add element ice anywhere? Adds element air. This guy have magic? I don't think these are considered magic. I don't see elemental signs on them. Okay. I need to do five damage to each of them or otherwise stay out of their range. Or maybe I could kill one and move to a location where that's going to happen. There's also traps conveniently located in front of them. This guy looks like he probably hits a trap a lot of the time coming towards us. Do we have a push? I can poison. Poison makes him take more damage. What is that? Toxic bolt. Infuse element earth. Any hints about their cards or their uh, active bonuses? Innate target two, active bonuses, nothing. I definitely don't want to be attacked by these. Has no range and he's melee. Presumably we deploy like here, here, do some damage to this one, maybe be shocking it. Yeah. So you go there. All right, what abilities do you have? Range three. We're going to, where was wound? Survive three rounds. I want to save the stun for surviving three rounds. Attack two, range three, target two. Attack three, range three. Go five, we're at full, eight and six. A 
That's probably fine. We'll take Toxic Bolts. Add Earth. <laughs> it's hard when there's a bunch of um, bunch of options. Hard, maybe the wrong answer. There's a lot of options to choose from at the beginning. It's it's not clear what my basic stuff wants to be. I'll take Enhancement Field. Seems like a card I want to get rid of. And then our Spellweaver is going to earn some bitches, maybe. We're going to Flame Strike and Fire Orbs. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. So we're going first and third. Okay. Target, move two, immobilize. Move one, attack two. Okay. I mean, it doesn't say it draws a card when it takes damage. All right, so we start here. We have two options. Our goal was to do damage here. So I can top bottom or bottom top. So this is pack five range two. Seems pretty good here. It does burn it. I've got a lot of cards. I don't know if that's worth it or not. I might not need it, right? I add plus one damage. This thing has got five health. My rolls are pretty bad here, it looks like. Equal distribution, plus one, minus one. Pretty rare chance of hitting any of the extreme modifiers. I need five to kill it. It goes after us, so we can do damage from someone else. We are using fire orbs, so we probably do just want to buff damage here. Yeah. Buff damage. And then let's poison that. Yeah. And that infused earth. Cool. Hey, Jelly Rogers. He did avoid the path, the trap, rather. Us again. Range three, they're out of range there. I could move. And then hit all three of them. Pack three, does that count the plus one I have chat or not yet? It does. Move one, attack two. I can move to the center of the room and nuke them all. Or move there and nuke them all. Alright. Move. And then we're going to fire orb. Target three. I wondered about moving there. So now... There's two elements infused. Okay, another zombie and another living bone showed up. Okay. I can take anything to gain plus one attack damage. I think that says. I could kill the front one, or I could use a tinkerer. Tinkerer can do damage or no? But a heal. Range 
range two, range three, pull two. So I could go there, pull him through the trap, and kill him if I wanted. Then kill that one and let them move in. Try to get a like frost nova or something. Move two with this, right? Yeah. Restorative miss remove. Target two, range three. Seems actually pretty good. Do that. Okay. And you. We're going to kill those two. We're going to do it at speed 17. All right, and what about this guy? Yeah, it's based off a game, uh, board game. So we're gonna wanna do one more round of damage before reviving either. We wanna do two more burns here. Jump and try to get loot. No burns on this. Try to wait. All your burn cards. Do things have zone of control here? It doesn't really feel like it. Could heal and recover. All right. All right. All right, so we're going first and last. Gonna move two, attack two, move one, heal two. Okay. So we wish to move two and then shoot. And this is attack two there and there. A plus one there, great, and a plus zero there, also great. Okay. They move over and hit me. Hit me for zero because he min rolled. I wonder what his deck. Can I see his deck? <laughs> he just he just crit failed. Sure. What happened to the zombie? The zombie didn't do anything. Move zero. <laughs> oh lol. Okay, never mind. The skeleton, I mean. All right, so I was thinking I was going to have to heal here. That was the point of doing it this order. Pretty much have to, though, right now, right? Do I have a bottom attack? I don't. Ooh. Infuses light. And then get me my burn card back. Okay. All right, so we accomplished little. Round three. This is the last round we have to survive. So it'd be nice to loot some shit. We got all of our cards back on Spellweaver. Minus the one we used. I don't know why Flame Strike isn't back. Didn't I just revive burnt cards? I guess it wasn't burnt. Okay. Using Nova is adjacent. Fire orbs is the one I was excited about. I don't know what happened to my elements. I guess they don't stay forever. I don't have fire charged anymore. Although presumably I can absorb like light or something. None of these things do damage on the bottom. I guess I could end up somewhere. Okay, and what's Tinker got? In one for each targeted attack three. I'm solid. That thing, Living Corpse Elite. You. 
net shooter. Or I could immobilize the bastard, but it's an AoE here. It's kind of nice. I was going to kill both those and then try to get some loot, maybe? What is that second thing in there? Dark infuses the battlefield with a dark element. Bill will use cards turn and use for the single target. Uses. Okay. Not a lot of way to use infused elements right now, it looks like. Okay, so this is top damage. Do I have bottom damage anywhere? I've got a loot too, but I'm not close to anything. I have an immobilize. Immobilize target one adjacent enemy. So I can immobilize the zombie and walk away. Reasonable. All right, so we're gonna just stun it. We're gonna net shooter and hold on. That has loot two on it. Go there and fucking loot two. Take a little bit of damage on the way out. We know what the zombies are gonna roll. I've at least moved three. Where's the loot to? It's the bottom. I have move on top anywhere. Attack four, range three, long rest, hook gun. Attack two, move two. There's no movement on the top. I can't use the loot on the bottom in this position. There's not gonna be any loot in the bottom. Hmm. All right. We're gonna go for our original plan then, which was deal a bunch of damage. And then do something. Move, probably. Might as well get the experience. So I guess I should do it the other way around. Uh, no, I want to do this after. Shit. No, I'm not looting. I'm just doing damage. Okay. And then you are mana bolting. Fire orb, that's the one I want to do. You can move two on this. Two get us anything? Two gets us a little bit. I feel like I'm having a really hard time figuring out how to loot. Do I, am I supposed to lose a large portion of the loot for this? All right, living corpse of loot has move one, attack three. Living bones are move three, attack zero. And living corpse is move one, attack three. Okay. So. We're gonna end up there. Three targets. Chests I want to get greedy for. Okay. Sweet, sweet experience. Go. I want to see a level up too. Okay. And then we're going to move. Okay, generated fire, but I don't have a good way to utilize that, to my knowledge. This is our second one. We're going to shoot three. It's range three. We're going to go there and kill these three. This guy's a little bit scary. He can move one, deal three. Can go there. He can't hit me if I go there, and I can hit three targets. It seems okay. I doubt we're going to kill him anymore. Here we go, move. I could move six. This gives me experience, too, and this is the end of the round. I might as well. I guess I can do the damage first then and see. Yeah. Oh, it's range three. Why does it let me target that then? Oh, it's an AOE. It's not three attacks. Fuck. Okay. That's different than I thought. I can still do this. 
presumably. Got to move a little bit closer. Annoying. I want to take this move. Jim, they can go there and hit those two. And then we can drop this here. Yeah, that's no more movement. Okay. Oh, like that. Oh, what happened to my second attack, buddy? AoE, attack three, range three. What happened to this guy? I set it on those two tiles. Now I eat whatever this is. Alright, but that's round three. Okay. The portal suddenly blink out of existence. Whatever dark magic was reanimating the undead ceases to exist and they collapse to the floor. You've survived the undead onslaught and returned restored peace to the sanctuary. I don't know what happened there. Alright, I can express this how grateful I am. Truly thank you. Thank you. With the threat to the sanctuary gone, we can finally resume the restoration of the temple here. It will be some time before we're ready to resume our normal services, but I hope we can be of help in the future. I bid you farewell. Hang on a second. We did that for free? I thought we were supposed to be looking for a paid job. Oh, never mind. Join a guild, they said. It'll be fun, they said. You can make heaps of gold. Puff, grumble, grumble. Don't mind him. Thanks to you, the temple will reopen in due time. You'll be glad to receive their blessings. Now, the next village we lost contact, which is the marshes. The marches? The route is under lockdown after a number of raids from small bands of vermling camping nearby. I want you to head up north and see if you can dry them out. Oh, and watch out for their hounds. Let's... You let these scars across my face be a warning to you. You get close to the dogs and they'll bite back. Okay. Uh, can I do anything in, in between missions? I know you said eventually I'm going to be able to do something, but um, it's not right now. I finished the battle brother run. Nope. We got a, uh, we have, we did Kraken today. We've got monolith and um, water mill tomorrow. You can, but it's too early. Okay. As you head north from the demon spire, the path gradually turns to mud and the farmland gives way to small patches of woodland. Entering one of the thickets, you hear the howls of wolves on the wind and strange high-pitched grunts urging them on. It seems they've picked up their scent. You prepare for battle. Uh, we soloed cracking with a single dude, Benji. You sure you didn't miss anything? All right. Hounds burst from the undergrowth, barking at you menacing menacing menacingly soon followed by a vemling scout he seems to be briefly taken aback at having stumbled upon a band of mercenaries but quickly gains his composure and knocks an arrow ready to fight okay so we've got a different mix i wonder if it's only ever two or if we get four at some point i wonder how it decides who we're bringing do we get to choose that later anyways there's two dogs the dogs have innate retaliate a retaliating character inflicts x direct damage to any attackers within range if a range is not specified that only applies to adjacent attackers okay level ones I don't know what the four is. Or HP, I guess. Yeah, it must be. Gotcha, Stormworm. Thanks. All right. So we got to kill these. Kill all enemies in all rooms. There's multiple rooms. Cool. All right. Are these the same abilities we had before? They are. So we have a nice AoE and fire orbs. And does can we just double AoE and be done with this? Throwing knives, targets two, damage two. Flame orbs are target three, damage three. Three health, all right, so that's clearly how we do it. We hit those. You can get screwed by damage rolls, right? What are my deck here? Deck here is pretty medium. Anyway, I can buff damage. Any like bottom cards that buff damage. On the next two sources of damage to you, suffer no damage instead. And infuse Frost with that new card. Any strike doesn't draw Frost, right? No. Or, um, Fire Orbs, rather. Okay. And what's the Scoundrel got for me? Flanking Strike.
throwing knives. Venom Shiv. Poison ones, they take more damage from other attacks. Can I poison two of them? Negative. Single out. Add plus two attack and gain one when the attack the target is adjacent. Next four attacks targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies add plus two to attack. Interesting. Can I throwing knives? Inch three. All right, let's go single out into throwing knives. Throwing knives, single out, done. And then. We're gonna flame strike and move, or fire orbs and move. What's move? And a bolt. Actually, wanna move after I kill everything. What speed is she acting at? 10? It's very slow. Fire orbs is pretty slow too. I need something faster. Maybe this thing for movement. I don't know if 21 is good enough. Otherwise it has to be mana bolt. Mana bolt's kind of whatever. Alright. Go fast. Okay. Oh, hounds are real fast. They're at six speed. It's brutal. Okay. So we were never going ahead of them, unfortunately. Okay, we'll take one damage. Take one damage. All right, so we want to move two. Unfortunately, we have to move back. It's really annoying. Let's move two. Why can't I not move here, chat? I thought I could move through my own stuff. Oh, I'm immobilized from the hound's attack. Well, that's a bit of a pain in my ass. Heal three. Heal after doing damage. I'm going to eat one more, right? But I can't even hit that last target because I can't get in range because I can't move because the hound just did this to me. What a dick. Okay. Maybe a move would have been better here. Oh, I'm still immobilized though, so I don't have a choice. Okay. Sucks that I selected two range attacks and the hounds go faster than me. I guess maybe um, the fact that they go faster is relevant. Pack three is good enough. I'm going to change my plan here since I have to take another action to kill them anyways. And if I attack them with a ranged attack, I get a negative roll, right? So I'm going to attack here. And then I'm gonna loot. Get all the loot. Okay. Ooh, negative two roll, so no damage. Seems fine. All right, our turn. We've already looted everything. We wanna move as close as possible while killing this guy this turn, I believe. Lost fire orbs are burned. Mana bolt only discarded. I don't really care if he goes first that much. new we just want to move well we need to do damage too I guess I could I mean frost armor as a defensive is okay let me just have like a move so frost armor is bottom we have a move on top no move four bottom doesn't burn and what's the attack? The flame strike? Seems fine. I'll let him go first too. Well, am I gonna let him go first? Yeah, I don't know. What was his action last time? I don't remember what speed. All right, we'll take these. Damage on top, where's my move there? Okay. 
And then you are going to move to attack two. Seems nice on top. Attack three, poison one. Be enough to just kill that. Maybe I don't even have to kill. Can I? We used our heal. We have another heal. But what if I assume that the scoundrel can kill first? Move three, kill. Where's my move three? Flanking strike. Backstab. That will definitely kill. I go backstab and move. I need move three. There's a move five there. Seems fine. Okay. And you can do uh, Frost Armor. Getting the buff up would be nice. And then maybe a, do I have a decent sized move? I got to move four there. All right. Yeah. All right. So we go first. Great. Gain one experience for that, but we gain one experience for this. Doesn't really matter. This one does more damage. It's five as opposed to three. I did consider experience gaining cards. That one has one experience, and this is one experience. So either option gives me the same amount of experience here. Okay. And then we're going to move four. End up on the treasure. And then we're going to buff. Oh, damn it. Both on bottom didn't notice. I've done that a lot of times now. Can't attack, apparently. Rip. And at least I got the gold, I guess. Yep. All right, moving through this door into the enemy unknown. Move three, poison one seems nice. We're doing a uh, quick hand special mixture. Okay, and you are gonna do uh, if I were to short rest, lose one discarded card at random in order to cover all the other discarded cards. Okay. For all your burn cards. Gonna be flame strike and ride the wind, I think. Yeah. Alright, let's see what happens. So we're gonna move. We're gonna move three poison. One. Fuck. They're way far away. We get no value out of that. Boo. For some reason I have to go into that room. I guess I'll run out of cards if I don't push forward. I mean, I can get an attack off on that dog. It's going to retaliate. It's not super helpful for me. I'm at 7 health, too. I'm going to get friggin' destroyed, I think. Although, maybe they can't get in range. Pointing turn though, huh? All right, we're staying there. What did the hound roll? Whatever the fuck it wanted. Move three, attack me. Muddle. Muddle do. 
Model character gains disadvantage on all of its attacks. The model condition is removed at the end of the character's next turn. Okay. You can move eight. He has three health, three health. Eight seems good. New round of one. Fresh from the stage coach. Ah, thanks for the gifted sub, an anonymous gifter. All right, what are we doing about this? We got two active enemies. A little light on resources. Yo, after taking damage, we have disadvantage on all of our attacks. Easy smoke bomb. What's invisible do for us? Can I see the status? Invisible character cannot be focused on or nor targeted by the enemy, but can be damaged by non-targeted ability. Ah, seems pretty good. Okay. A new subscriber arrives. It fills you with determination. So we could flanking strike into a smoke bomb. Ah, and thanks Rice for the gifted sub as well. Cheers, man. Do I need to move five? I think I just moved two. It's fine, right? So I go smoke bomb. I might just be able to kill it though, right? Attack three. Try that. Okay, what are you doing? Kill all enemies in all rooms. Seems like we're almost there. Freezing Nova seems very bad here. Reviving either. This seems useful to me. Well, maybe. A little light, light on resources right now. All right, so we go first. We're going to go visible. And then we're going to hit him for three. Double because of invisibility. Looks like he doesn't retaliate when he's dead. Nice work, dog. Are we still invisible? Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. All right. I think I should just move away from this guy. Maybe end up on some stuff. Here we go. Move two. And then recover all my burn cards. Okay. Alright, what's this dude? I know what this dude's doing. Could have looked. Oops. Nothing. <laughs> oh, man, sucks to suck. Alright, what do we have available to us? Long rest. Choose one discarded card to burn all to burn to recover all other discarded cards. Wait, I thought I got my burn cards back. Oh, did I not burn any cards? I just brought back, um, damn it. I messed up, I mixed up discarded and burned. It's not gonna matter for this fight, I guess, but. I should total, this is range what? Range three? That's slow is the only issue. Okay, and what do you have available? A short rest. Sure. Okay. And then we're going to. Do I get to the end of the round, or is it over when it's over? Like if I kill this guy, it's over. It 
This is three. Or my moves I have any left. I don't mean the character, I mean the other guy. I guess I'll find out right now. Round ends, that's what I wanted to hear. Okay, so we want to. Move attack. Attack poison. Gain experience. Seems good. So I just move and kill. And then you go. Move. Dude, if I had a loot one right now. I do, but it's on top of that. Can I move two? Move three. Loot one. That seems fine. Alright, so we go move three, loot one. All right, and this guy does nothing because he's an idiot. Sure. All right, so we move. They both gain one experience. They both do three damage. Makes no difference whatsoever. We go here. Get movement. Attack. Minus one didn't die. Feels bad. Okay. Not poisoned. If he doesn't die, it did matter. That has one extra damage on it. <laughs> Wait, did I? Did he resist the poison? Like, what happened? I thought I did attack that way. Andrew uses venom move. Andrew uses flanking. Oh, I did it backwards. Shit. All right. Well, it gives us more time to loot, I guess. Are we ahead of him? I could kill it. I could move to here. I only lose one bit of loot and I don't take the damage. I don't know if taking the damage matters though. Should have poisoned him. Okay. Now, this is a bit of an issue. Keep saying maybe. I got experience out of that. Going super low in new turn order or super late. Okay. We're gonna move three. Could try to kill him. I can't loot. No, oh, let's move three. Okay. Alright. Um attack and turn get loot all right we're going to attack oh, I, oh I can attack up top though and I, but I can move if I attack here I can move yeah. does attack gain the experience and then we're gonna move there and get loot All right, so we ended up with a bunch of gold out of that. All right, chat. The sponsored content is officially over. It's been two hours of two and a half hours of Gloomhaven right now. Um, kind of enjoying this right now. I'm probably going to play for another little bit here and then call it a night. Uh, I was hoping to get to just a moment where I could actually level my guys. Um, one quick, uh, let me just go through a couple of talking points again as a quick reminder on the way out. Um, Again, reminder that you can get this if you wish to through the links on my stream, exclamation point Gloomhaven or the panel below the stream. Um, it just received a content update on the 17th. 
and the devs are very interested in continuing to correspond with the community as to what people want to see in it. It just added a co-op mode so you can play with a friend that is now multiplayer, uh, which is kind of cool because it's based on a multiplayer board game. Um, and other than that, this was Gloomhaven. Hope you guys enjoyed it.